I'm glad you're with us this morning as we gather together to worship God. I don't know when you are watching this, whether it is live or recorded later. We had a big storm in Ottawa last night, and we've had all kinds of issues with trees down and power out and all those kinds of things. But we are gathered together to worship the Lord, and I hope that you are able to be with us. We're continuing to look at who God is and why that matters to us. Today, we're looking at God the Son, Jesus and why that matters to us. So join us as we sing together, as we read the Bible, as we study the Bible and proclaim Jesus. Let's worship. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Paul's. We are so glad you are joining our service, whether you're here in the sanctuary or online. And we hope and pray that you are safe. Um, And it is so good to be back here in the sanctuary and being able to worship you, worship with you, um, our Lord. And um, we, we are just so glad that we can be together in this place as the body of Christ. And there is a, there is a true joy uh, in the place of worship. And I hope and pray that you will feel the same way. Uh, at this time, let's all stand and praise the name of Jesus. You freed me, held back the waters 
welcome to those who have braved the roads out there to be here. Um, we live in Barhaven. We're right off of Woodruff. I had to go to the 416 to get here because Woodruff and Green Bank are closed. Power lines all over the road, apparently. So I'm really glad you're here. I'm really glad you're here with us online as well as we worship the Lord together. Uh, we do have some announcements, and the first is my apologies. There's no coffee time today because the crew that was going to do coffee is not able to be here today, and we weren't able to get things together in time to make coffee happen. There's water. If somebody wants to put on a pot, we could do that too, but officially we don't have any coffee. Um, uh, something that I neglected, and my apologies to all those concerned, but it happened while I was on vacation, so there was something in my head that told me it had been announced when it hadn't been announced, but Jeff and Alice had their baby about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, three weeks ago. <laughs> Lua, Lua, and second name, Marie? Abigail, Lua Abigail. So our congratulations to you and Alice. There was a possibility they were going to be out this morning, but not, right? Not this morning. So, so we celebrate with, with Jeff and Alice at the arrival of Lua. I'm also a grandfather again. Our kids in Prince George had a little girl last night. Bria is her name. Yeah, sorry. Just trying to think. Yesterday, yeah, it was. No, it was early, early morning yesterday morning. That's right. So we're pleased about that as well. Oh, well, thank you. Yes. The, the grandparent thing, you have absolutely no part in it at all, and people clap for you. Thank you. Yay. Um, there is this week on Wednesday, there is the, the beginner's poetry workshop that, uh, that Libby McKechnie is doing. Uh, and there is the golf tournament that's coming up on July 16th. Keep your eyes open for further information. The big give is two weeks from yesterday, and we still need some help with that. It looks like we've probably got a good crew together for the Saturday itself, but the Friday for setup, we definitely need some people for that, and probably for the cleanup at the end of the day on Saturday, we probably need some help for that. So given that there's not many people here, uh, there are some sign-up sheets just on the other side of that wall. If you are able, please, uh, please indicate so. And for those online, if you're able to help out, that is on particularly on the 3rd of June, uh, please let the office know and we can get your name put onto the list as well. Those are all the announcements that we have. Let's, uh, let's pray together. Our loving God, we bow before you and give you praise for all that you are, for who you are. We worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the almighty God, the saving God, the sanctifying, transforming God who is with us day by day. We worship you because of your grace. We praise you because of your mercy and the forgiveness of our sins in Jesus. We honor you for all that you are. Bless us, we pray, Lord. Forgive all our sins. Take them from us. Heal us of their, the damage that sin has done in our lives. Make us new and whole, Lord, we pray. And bless us with your spirit that we would encounter the living God this day. Our God, all this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I would invite the young folk to come up to the front. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you. Today, I was reading a verse very, very dear to me from my childhood. I thought I was thinking of it. Everybody, I think, knows this verse, which is John chapter 3, verses 16. Yeah? Familiar? It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that who believes in him shall not perish, but have ever eternal life. For God so loved.
of the world. Ah. Then I start to think, hmm, what, how much it's so much, so love, can we measure it? Measure it? So I thought of maybe I can measure God's love with measuring cup. <laughs> Why you're laughing? So like you measure the cookies, you want to make flour, oil, everything. And then I remember in the Bible says, what it says? In... Um, God is my shepherd, and then in verse 5 in Psalms 23 says, overflow. So it will be overflow from the measuring. So, uh, uh uh, do you think with me? We can't measure it? No. So, then I thought maybe we can measure God's love with the measure tape. It's a long, you know. We can measure the height, height, and everything, yeah? Can we measure God's love with this one? No, because that's... Not enough, because then I remember in the Bible what it says. It says, God's love is height above the heaven. Oh, Oh, my God. Can we measure? No. So this measuring tape, it's not work anymore. Then I thought of, okay, I think I will measure God's love with watch. Hmm? Some people, they measure how much Pastor Shahrza talks for the children's time. Not to go long, okay? But, so we can measure many things, times, how much I speak, how much we do the activities. But can we measure God's love with this one? And the Bible says, the Bible says God's love is everlasting. No beginning and no end. So we cannot, there is no time to start loving and then it's finished. No, all the time. Then I thought, okay, you know what? We can't measure God's love with this thing. And it's not necessary we measure God's love to know how much God loves us. The important thing is he loves us and the important thing is we experience that love. You experience it. That is important, to experience God's love. Okay, remember. And my prayer for you all is each one of us, to experience God's love in our life, okay? Let us pray. Thank you, God, for loving us, and your love is so high, wide, and unable to measure. We ask you to be with us in order we experience your love, which is the most important things in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's go. That for the message. Thank you, Pastor Sharzat, uh, for the message. Um, our Sunday worship, our gathering, uh, reminds me of um, the presence of our living God and His great love for us. And we are so thankful to be here to worship Him together. And I hope and pray that our lives and our hearts will be um, inspired uh, by the love of Christ and also empowered uh, by his power that our Lord Jesus is truly alive in us and he is working in us and through us. So let us uh, remember his love and his power. Let us continue to worship him.
Our first reading from the Bible this morning is in the Old Testament. We are reading Psalm 121. Let's hear God's word. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord who watches over us, the Lord who is with us, the Lord who gives us his grace in Jesus. We give thanks in one way through our offerings. Uh, In the church, we have a plate at the back. If you would like to use it online, you can go to our website, stpaulsottawa.com, click on give. What you need to know is there. Let us give thanks to God as we offer ourselves to him. Let us pray. Our God, we thank you for sustaining life. We thank you that, that the damage yesterday, yesterday evening was limited. We thank you that deaths were few, that injuries were few. We thank you for your goodness, your grace. We thank you most of all for Jesus and life in him. We offer to you ourselves. We offer to you our money, our time, our skills. We offer them to you, Lord, to use for your glory and to use for the work of your kingdom going forward. And we offer them all, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us offer our hearts and our lives to the Lord as we continue to praise His name.
Our second reading this morning from the Bible is from John 3, and Sharzad and I did not confer, so I don't know if she saw that I was preaching from John 3 uh, or not. If she didn't, God. If she did, God. Uh, John 3, verses 1 to 21. <clears throat> now, there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you were doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows whatever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds are evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear of their, that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that they may see, be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have been to Cambodia six times. Four of those times was for short-term mission trips. Two of the times was to work through our adoption process. So for the four trips that I went to Cambodia without grace, I brought home a special gift to her. Now, Cambodia is known for a number of things. It's known for some negative things that all stem from the Vietnam War. The war spilled over the borders, created a civil war, a whole lot of bad has come from that. But there's also, so also some really wonderful things about Cambodia as well. It's a very beautiful country. The people are warm and friendly, though they do stare. And it's not considered rude, which is weird when you grow up being told that staring is rude. But Cambodia is also known for sapphires. So yes, each of those four times I went to Cambodia, I brought Grace back some jewelry. My, my favorite and Grace's favorite was a ring that I had made. Uh, I went into the, the jeweler and looked at a bunch of gemstones. It's a cool thing if you get the opportunity to do it, just to look at the stones. And 
I selected one really, really lovely deep blue sapphire. When I told the woman the size of the ring, and yes, I knew what the size was and what setting it, the, the stone would be in, she went through a drawer with a whole bunch of little manila envelopes and found the right one and pulled it out, opened it, and dropped out a lump of gold on her hand, which was the exact amount of gold you needed for that size ring in that setting. And then three days later, I went and picked up the finished ring. And if you were here at the second service, you could see that if you went to see Grace. I was fascinated to learn that not all sapphires are blue. How many people knew that? Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't. And in fact, the jeweler showed me this. this it was a lovely light green stone. I assumed it was a light emerald, but it was in fact a light green green sapphire. It's a very rare stone. But I really preferred the look of the deep blue sapphire, so that's what I went with. Did you know, and probably the same people do, that sapphires and rubies have exactly the same chemical composition? And are in fact, they have the same mineral structure. So in a very real way, sapphires and rubies are exactly the same. They have the same substance. It's the impurities in them that make for the different colors. But they have the same substance. God the Father and God the Son are of the same substance. In 325 AD, the Council of Nicaea was held from May to August. Church leaders got together, and from that came the Nicene Creed, which is the Trinitarian Creed. One of the words in that, one of the phrases, was that Jesus is the homoousion of the Father. Jesus is of the same substance as the Father. So like sapphires and rubies... Jesus and the Father are of the same substance. But unlike sapphires and rubies, the Father and the Son have no impurities in them. So in the end, sapphires and rubies are not a good illustration for the Trinity. So why did I go through all of that? Because no illustration of the Trinity works. None of them are good. We have several of them, but none of them really work. God the Holy Trinity, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God in three persons, three persons but one God. And we do have some illustrations that we use. There is an egg, three parts, one egg, right? The shell, the yolk, and the white, or the albumen. But they are different parts. They're not the same substance. There's an apple, three parts, one apple. There's the core of the flesh and the seeds. Three things, one thing, but they're not the same substance. They're different parts. H2O, one substance, three forms, solid, liquid, vapor, ice, water, steam. One substance, but it changes its form. And then, of course, there's St. Patrick's shamrock, right? Three, three leaves on one plant. One plant, three leaves, but the leaves are separate. An illustration, all illustrations that we use to help us understand God as Trinity fail us because our minds are not capable of really understanding how there can be three persons but one God. God is bigger than our capacity to fully understand. And I'm okay with that. We come to the third message in our series looking at who God is and why it matters. Just because we cannot fully understand God doesn't mean we shouldn't try to understand because in growing understanding, our faith is encouraged, but also in growing understanding, our appreciation of God increases. And that's important, because when our appreciation of God increases, our faith increases, and our action 
in serving and honoring and worshiping God increases. It transforms us. And today we consider God the Son, the second person in the Holy Trinity. And to do so, we are looking at John 3. Now, this may sound strange to you. I have been in ministry almost for 35 years. You know how many times I have preached specifically on John 3.16? One time. I tend to leave like the classics to other people. I like to go and dig into other parts of the Bible. So this is only the second time I have preached on John 3.16. I know it sounds bizarre. I certainly, you know, study the passage, refer to John 3.16, but in terms of it being the centerpiece, this is only the second time. First, the context. It was still early in Jesus' ministry, but he had had enough of an impact that people were asking a lot of questions. And Nicodemus, one of the ruling council, came to Jesus at night to talk to him, to ask him questions. Now, it's believed that he came at night because Nicodemus was concerned what the others in the ruling council would think of him if he had gone to Jesus openly during the day. John writes of this conversation, and in the conversation, Jesus is going deeper and deeper in the face of Nicodemus just not getting it, not understanding what Jesus was talking about. Jesus began, with, began the conversation with a concept that was outside of Nicodemus' frame of reference. Jesus said, you must be born again. Or if you looked at the footnote in the Pew Bibles, it could also be translated born from above. You must be born again. You must be born from above. Now, for Jews in the first century, their birth meant their place in the universe. That's true for all of us, right? We are born, we are in the universe now, we have a place in the universe. But for Jews, it was more than that, because their birth meant that they were a child of Abraham. And that was everything. And that was their place in the universe. They were a child of Abraham. So for Nicodemus, the question was not only how could someone be born again, Nicodemus' question was also why would anybody want to be born again if you could? Jesus plowed on by telling Nicodemus that no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Now, most commentators believe this is a reference to baptism and new life in Christ, related but not synonymous things. They are connected, but they're not the same thing. But I've always seen this in a different way. I see born of water as referring to our natural, physical birth. A woman's water breaks and a child is born of water. Let you in on a really fun piece of trivia. I wrote that on Friday. Late Friday night, I got a text that our daughter-in-law's water had broken. I was going, oh, okay, so maybe, no, I didn't have anything to do with it at all. So I, I see born of water as being our natural birth. And remember the context. Jesus is talking to Abraham, who is, the whole thing is about he is a child of Abraham. His born of water is being a child of Abraham. And Jesus is saying, great, but that's not enough. There needs to be more. There needs to be more. He had been, he had to be born again, Abra or Nicodemus had to be born again or born from above, born of water and born of the Spirit. Now, if you prefer the baptism and, and new life in Christ thing, that's cool. You don't have to believe what I believe on that one, but I'm sticking to mine. Jesus went on to talk a bit about the Holy Spirit and how the Spirit is beyond our control and even our understanding, something else that Nicodemus was kind of uncomfortable with. The Pharisee continued not to understand what Jesus was going on about, so Jesus came to the heart of the matter in verse 13. No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. 
Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life. Now, Jesus' words here were both looking back to something that had happened and looking ahead to something that was going to happen. The looking back was back to the book of Numbers, Numbers 21, early in the Old Testament, where there was a plague of poisonous snakes, and God told Moses to make a bronze snake, put it on a pole, and hold it up so all the people could see it, and in seeing it, they would be healed. Jesus was referring back to that event where the people looked at the snake that was lifted up and they were healed. But Jesus was also looking ahead, saying that not only would people be healed, but they would be saved and given eternal life when they saw the Son of Man lifted up, when they saw Jesus lifted up. This is about Jesus taking our sin and the sin of the world upon himself and offering himself as the perfect sacrifice for all our sin, my sin, your sin, the world's sin, to forgive our sin. Why and how? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Now, part of me thinks that this is such a well-known verse or verse or two that that they don't really need comment, but perhaps it is because they are so well-known that we need some comment to truly hear them. That God so loved the world It wasn't just the nice people that God loved. It wasn't just the good people that God loved. It wasn't just the Christians that God loved, in part because Christians didn't believe or didn't exist yet when Jesus said this, but that God loved the whole world, the whole world so much that he gave up his one and only son as the sacrifice for our sins so that everyone who trusts in him would not perish, would not be condemned, but would have eternal life. Because God didn't become human to condemn the world. God became human to save the world. And we can express that in a couple of different ways. If we emphasize the threeness of the Trinity, right, three persons, then we would say it the way John said it in this book, that God the Father sent his Son as a sacrifice for our sins. But if we emphasize the oneness of the Trinity, there's three persons, but there's just one God, then God sacrificed himself in Jesus, his Son, It means the same thing, but there's an emphasis that makes it sound, well, there's there's different nuances going on and deeper meaning in that. But either way, it proclaims, actually shouts aloud God's deep and unshakable love for the people of this world. God's deep and unshakable love for you. What would you be willing to sacrifice for someone you loved who loved you? Probably a lot. Probably a lot. What would you be willing to sacrifice for someone you loved, but who looked at you completely indifferently? You know, they say the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. So what if you loved someone and they looked at you completely indifferently to the point that if you sacrificed for them, they would just roll their eyes? What would you sacrifice for someone like that? Perhaps not as much. But God sacrificed everything for people who didn't care anything about him at all because he loved them, because he loves us so much. Now, this one passage includes five names or titles for Jesus. 
Jesus, which means the Lord saves. Rabbi, Jesus is the great teacher. Son of man is a title for the Messiah that we find in the prophet Daniel. Uh, Son of God, the second person in the Holy Trinity, and the light. Jesus is the light of the world. Now, all of these names and titles point to Jesus being the Savior, the Savior of the world. Jesus came to save his people, but save us from what? Well, Jesus came to save us from death. Now, I know that we are all going to die sooner or later, but in Jesus and by God's grace, death is not the last word. In Jesus, we are saved to eternal life. That begins here and now, but it is a life that exists beyond death. The Apostle Paul called death the last enemy to be destroyed. And though we all experience death, by God's grace, death doesn't stick. Because in Jesus, God raises us up to new life in him. So we are saved from death. In Jesus, we are saved from darkness. As in much of the Bible, light is seen as a symbol of truth, and darkness is a symbol of lies, that which is not true. In Jesus, we are saved from the lies of the world, but it is not only being saved from darkness, it is being saved to the light that we may live in the truth that is God. Not just facts and figures about God, but the truth of God, his existence, his love, his power, his mercy, his grace. In Jesus, we are saved from sin and evil. The world is full of sin and evil. We know that. And, and we seem incapable of living completely faithfully to God as he is faithful to us. And we are all impacted by the consequences of our own sin and the sin of people around us and the evil of the world. But in Jesus, we are saved from that because on the day of the Lord's return, all that stands against God will be judged. And God will use evil to destroy itself. Evil will come to an end. God will use evil with tyrants like Putin to destroy evil itself. Evil will consume itself at God's command. We are also saved from things like despair because in Jesus we have hope. Safe from meaninglessness because in Jesus we have purpose. Safe from apathy because who can be apathetic in the face of a God who loves us so much that he would sacrifice his own son for us? We are safe from hate because God is loved. We are saved from deception because God is truth. We are saved from from the pressure to conform, the pressure to fit into what the world says we are supposed to be and do. We are saved from all of that in Jesus. Who is God? One picture of God is as Son, Jesus, the Savior, the one in whom and through whom we are saved to eternal life. And that in and of itself is probably the Biggest impact that we will ever experience in our lives, moving from death to life, moving from condemned sinner to saved follower of Jesus, moving from darkness to light. In this passage, we see explicitly that in Jesus we are saved from death and darkness and evil. Implicitly, we see that we are saved from brokenness and isolation. And implicit in all of this is that God wants us to be with him in Jesus. And those parts of our lives, those parts of ourselves that are broken by the pain and suffering that we've experienced in life will be redeemed, will be healed, and the fullness of God's grace will fill us, and we will be in whole and complete and right relationship with the God who loves us. How do I know this? Because God so loved the world 
that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to, con- to condemn the world, but to save the world. Who is God and why does it matter? God in Jesus is the Savior, our Savior, who saves us from everything that separates us from this amazing God that loves us so much. Let's pray together. Our God, we thank you for what we see in your word. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for Jesus as the second person in the Holy Trinity, that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, but also that Jesus is the perfect sacrifice come to forgive our sins. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your willingness to bear our sins on the cross. We thank you for your resurrection. We thank you that you give us eternal life over death, that you give us light over darkness, that you give us wholeness over sin and evil. We thank you. And Lord, we do pray for an end to the evil in Ukraine. We pray for an end to the war. We pray for your righteousness and justice. Father, we pray for those who are affected by the storm uh, yesterday. We pray for families of those who were killed or injured. We pray for people who have lost property. We pray for people who continue to be without uh, without power. We pray for those in the U.S. um, because of the shooting in Buffalo and the shooting in the church in California. And Lord, closer to home here in our own fellowship, Lord, we pray for Irma and for Dan uh, in uh, Irma's brother dying. We pray for Bud and for Betty. We pray for Arden and Marion. We pray for Eleanor and Bob. We pray for Gordon and Judy. Lord, we pray all of these prayers in confidence, and we pray them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's sing the last song together as we respond to the Word of God.
Go in the saving grace that God has given to us in Jesus. Go trusting him. Go believing in him. Go knowing him. And may the love of God the Father and the grace of our Lord Jesus and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.
Lloyd. Hi, Lloyd.